2023 wrapped up and what a great year for gaming. We had so many quality games. Is 2024 going to be this? I don't know. All I know is we're in the middle of January and we have a couple weeks worth of releases. So check them out. Starting off on 18th of January, we have Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, the new center in the Ubisoft series, but this time in the form of a Metroidvania side scroller. You know, like the original 1989 game. This time, though, we are playing as a new hero, Sargon, a member of the Immortals, a clan of brave warriors who take on an adventure to save the original Prince of Persia. And to his aid, he has the well known skills of the franchise gymnastics, Persian swordsmanship, pass, slip and slide, touch the deep dive, and uh, also time control the staple of the series. The time shifting abilities will have their own battle and platforming purposes. Sargon can dash through time or place time checkpoints where he can resurrect if things go south for example. As a metroidvania game the world will have many shortcuts, hidden rooms and will interconnect in a way that aids you in the backtracking. Yes, there will be backtracking but the player can make use of a mechanic that lets him make screenshots and pin them on the map in order to remember where to go for an unsolved puzzle for example. Look, I've grown up with the sands of time, the two thrones, the warrior within so, you know, this series is kind of close to my heart. And yes, I played the demo and the game is actually good. I played through the first level and I enjoyed it a lot actually, sure. I got lost a time or two and thought that the battles were scarce. But check out that buttery smooth gameplay. Sargon moves lightly, easy. The battle system is kind of cool and that's somewhat a challenge thanks to the pretty tiny parry window. The controls are intuitive, you feel godlike in no time. There are blocks, dodges, parries, super moves. It's just a cool game and that's it. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown releases on PC, Switch, all the Xboxes and all the Playstations. Again, on 18th of January, Bulletstone VR. If you were waiting for Bulletstone 2, this is not the day to rejoice. For those who don't know, Bulletstorm is a first-person shooter that originally released in 2011 to generate positive reception. The game introduced a system that rewards you for showing creativity while dishing excessive violence to your fellow enemies. Keep your foes in there for 10 minutes using only kicks, you get a skill point. Blast them away with a shotgun and pull them back in within slapping reach with a whip, skill point. A generally interesting system that makes for, if not anything else, a fun experience. The VR entry introduces two brand new missions and a new playable character, Trishka. Now, I played the remastered version back in 2017 and although fun, ultimately didn't keep my attention for that long. And now, in a combination with the jankiness of VR, I think I'm going to skip this one. Personal opinion, of course. But if you are looking to have just like a casual fun, not commit to a deep story and you have a VR set lying around, this one is right in your lane. Also, as I mentioned, if the VR keeps the same, you know, fast paced action as the original, you might want to have a couple of paper bags beside you just in case. Bulletstone VR releases on PC, Xbox X and PS5 on 18th of January. And lastly on 18th of January we have Fractured Veil, vale, a survival horror game set in the near future of the island of Hawaii and more specifically Maui after a global catastrophe. As a survivor, you will be able to do all the survival stuff you know from the life hack videos and survival TV shows. Gather, build, craft, chase, fail, cry, upgrade, chase faster, catch, release because too cute, die of hunger. You will also have to defend your do to stay home from mutants and the one thing that's more fierce and dangerous than a fictional enemy. Yep. Real people. Fractured Veil vale is a multiplayer survival game, so you will meet new people who share your passion for not dying and losing death. You will help each other, complement your skills, give friends, loosen flowers, and generally live a happy post apocalyptic life. Nah, no. Nope. Imagine this 20 hours in, you've built the perfect survival home. You have walls, you have windows, maybe even a roof. I don't know. You've planted some shiny green potatoes that you found in a cave. You hope for the best. Rainwater gathers into a pink flower. Raindrops roll over into your mouth. Life is good. And then little Jimmy and his clan of classmates calling themselves the mm -hmm. burn everything to the ground just to have like a solid three second giggle. Joke side though, Fractured Veil vale features RPG player progression with skills and abilities, in-depth base building, rich crafting system, procedural building and more. All in all, the game sounds great on paper, although the graphics seem like a bit of 2000 you know what I mean? But I guess it's kinda normal for the genre. Also, kudos to the dev team of only three people. There is that thing that drones will follow players in game and stream, you know, gameplay to YouTube. I mean, I need to see this to actually have an opinion on it. If executed the right way, I can see this game being live streamed a lot and accumulating followers though. But we'll see, okay? Fractured Veil vale releases in early access on PC on Thursday. On the 19th of January is the release of The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered for PS5. If you don't know what The Last of Us is, you should probably go out less. 
But anyways, we will dive back again in the story of Ellie Joe and the Mushroom Bunch, but this time with visual improvements, dual sense integration, faster loading times, and more life improvements. I mean, the game already looked better on PS4 than most PS5 releases, so I don't know what the visual improvement part means. I mean, can you cut a cut diamond? Can you make the sunshine brighter? Can you make a perfect circle? Rounder? We'll see. The good news is, if you already own the PS4 version of the game, you can buy the remastered version for like 10 bucks, which is great. One of the new things, however, is a survival roguelike mode called No Return, where you can jump in the boots of your favorite character and try to survive randomized encounters while endangered by a permadeath, but aided with different upgrades between the runs. We all know that Tulupa 2R, which is the abbreviation of, of the title, is going to be played no matter what. And for only 10 bucks, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. And yeah, I'll make the Seattle trip once again. Also, roguelikes, my kind of game, so there's that. The Last of Us Part 2 remaster releases on PS5 on 19th of January. On 23rd of January, we can play Graven, a dark fantasy first-person shooter puzzler set in the old days. And by that, I mean it is pixelized to the brim. The player takes control of a priest of a strange sounding church who needs to battle his way to freedom, victory, money, through hordes of monsters on the hunt for an evil sect using only a wide variety of weapons and spells. Graven features a fast paced shooting, three different worlds, split screen multiplayer and up to four players co-op, which is nice. The game is being described as a spiritual successor to Hexen 2. Do you remember Hexen 2? You do? Yeah, you're all. The character and designs are by Chuck Jones, who previously worked on Half-Life and Duke Nukem 3D, while the voice work is done by Steven Waite from Dusk and Blood. I'm kinda old and I enjoyed Dusk, so I can definitely see myself playing this one. Looks like something you could play for half an hour before gathering the courage to you know, do your chores or something. Also, if, unlike me, you have actual friends, the co-op and the couch co-op sound like a great Saturday night. Graven releases for PC, Switch, all the Xbox and all the Playstations. Next, on 24th of January, we have Roots of Yggdrasil, a Norse mythology-based, turn-based city building deck builder roguelike where you take the role of Sona and her clan of Vikings who got unpleasantly surprised by Ragnarok and now must reach the top of the world tree Yggdrasil. The game will have you building a settlement using a deck of cards, artifacts, tools, acquaintances and NPCs all in a fast manner before Ganinga Gap not made a port. If you fail, you will have the pleasure of starting all of thus the roguelike part. You will gather resources, build stuff, upgrade your deck of cards, meet Norse gods, deities and heroes and just generally Try to be better and better at Viking stuff. The short magic word for me here is city building, deck builder, roguelike. I like building cities, and as a board gamer enthusiast, deck building is one of my favorite mechanics. Also, roguelike is just like the perfect premise for short bursts of enraging fun. You can say Norse mythology is on the rise with all the God of War and Taika weighted stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this game's take on Vikings will be like. Roots of Yggdrasil releases for PC on 24th of January. The second release on 24th of January is enshrouded, and you won't believe what type of game this is. Yes, a survival open world RPG with crafting mechanics. It is just something in January that makes people want to survive. And I don't blame them. Set within a voxel based continent, you choose your own path in an open world full of magic, magical beings, magic weapons, magic spells and ma magicians I presume. Enshrouded lets you build your own way of survival, battle bosses and save a corrupted world. Like, you know, most survival games. However, the voxel based building might be interesting as it lets you, for the game's creators, create the architecture of epic scale, where NPCs can take shelter from the harshness of their lives or a monster or something. Now, I can continue using the words epic and legendary as much as the game's creators did in the description on Steam, but at the end you get what you see. I won't say generic because I've not played it. You know, even if it doesn't show anything that we've never seen before, it probably is worth, you know, giving it a try. Now, I mean, you know how you can tell a game is janky by just seeing how the characters move like they slide through the ground you know what i mean at some point in the trailer it looked like a dark souls game the first one but a couple of seconds later i was like yeah nah anyways although a filler game i'm sure it will have its followers and shrouded releases on 24th of january on 25th of january releases apple justice ace attorney twitch a visual novel adventure game where you play as the rookie attorney apple justice if you like me, no Ace Attorney games from pop culture, but never actually played them. 
Let me school you. The series is a cross between an adventure game and a visual novel, where the goal of the player is to defend their clan in court. In order to do this, you go through two phases, investigation and trial. In the investigation phase, the player gains information from the game world by examining items, talking to people, etc. Everything you find out can then be used in the trial phase, where the player cross-examines and listens to witness testimonies. At any point, the player accumulates too many failed attempts to ask the right question or show the right evidence, the case is lost. Now, I, I think those games are better played than explained. Because if you haven't played it and you try to evaluate it based solely on what my description was, it sounds as a pure and dull garbage. However, Ace Attorney is a very well received game series. I like too well to be ignored. So, there it is. I'll commit. New year, new me. If I get my hands on this game, I'm playing the hell out of it. And I'll let you know how it went, people who never played the game but always wonder how this could be a good game. This is as much as I know about the gameplay that at some point the hero does this and he says something I imagine is like, boom, you have just been Ace Attorney. Yeah, sounds about right. But back on the trilogy. As the name implies, it is a collection of three games. The Apollo Justice game, as well as the Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice Phoenix Wright games. Plus two additional episodes to make it to a total of 16 episodes per the whole game. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy releases on 25th of January on PC, Xbox One, PS4 and Switch. Like a Dragon Infinite Whale releases on 26th of January. And your press have been heard. You will get to play as both Kasuga and Kiryu, the protagonists from the first Like a Dragon game and the Yakuza mainline series respectively. For the first time, the franchise is set not only in Japan, but also in Hawaii, where both the protagonists have their reasons to be. As with the first Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth employs a turn-based combat system for all characters. Each character can choose from multiple classes and receive distinctive perks from. As expected, a lot of minigames, most returning from previous titles, some new. But also, a whole new side activity lets you manage your own Hawaiian Resort Island, where you can, shout out to their games in the list, gather resources and create stuff. That's for Kasuga. Kiru, on the other hand, is trying to fulfill his bucket list, so yeah, there's that. I don't have much to say about the Yakuza series. I've never been someone who looks forward to these games. They're just not my cup of tea, but I get their charm. I get why people want to play those games. I get why people like those games. It's just not on top of my list. It's on top of Unshrouded, but not on top of the list. But hey, if you're a fan of the franchise, let me know in the comments which one is the best one to start with. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth released on PC, all the Xbox and all the Playstations on 26th of January. And last but not least, again on 26th of January, we are going to get our greasy little hands on Tekken 8. 8th main and 10th overall installment of the fighting series. Look at how time flies. Set 6 months after Tekken 7, the game story is set around the final battle between Kazuya and Jin Kazama, the father and son in one of the most dysfunctional families ever written about. With a total of 32 new characters, 4 of whom new, well, 3 I mean, do we consider a new Jack new character? The game comes with a lot of improvements, cinematic environments let you break more stuff, a heat system that can grant additional movesets, completely new character voices and models, and Unreal Engine 5. Yes, the first major fighting game to utilize Unreal Engine 5, so this one will be an eye kit. I've always been interested in how Tekken games, you know, develop over time and uh, about the story, about the characters. I play them whenever I feel like I want to play a fighting game. That said, I'm not good at fighting games, so my interest is like purely on the casuals. I just like to play the story, you know, learn a couple of combos, unlock a couple of extras, costumes, stuff like that. But mark my words, one of these days you will watch me on one of those evil events and I'll be all out of bubblegum. That was such a boomer joke, man. Anyways, Tekken 5 is on my list, so I'll give it a try when it's released on 26th of January for PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S. And this is it. All the games that are about to be released till the end of the month. If you've made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you for watching. If you had fun watching or you want to go even further in a godlike goodness, please like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments which of those games you're looking forward to, which are not your particular cup of tea. And if you think you can beat me 1v1 on Tekken 8, it was a pleasure. Cal out.